the previous Detroit video did very well, so in this one, I have two more stories to share with you, and both stories come from Arrowid.org, a website dedicated to drug harm reduction and drug trip reports. And if you want to read more stories like the ones that you're about to hear, the link to Arrowid.org and the stories in this video can be found in the description box down below. Our first story comes from user Lawrence. It was posted on July 15th, 2016. When one of my dealers told me I had to try Detroit the summer of my freshman year, I was skeptical. I was working a lifeguarding job and needed to stay sharp. At literally any moment, I could be called into action, but he assured me that it wouldn't be a problem. He was wrong. He gave me one pod and told me that half would be sufficient. Being an experienced psychonaut, I figured that I would take the whole pod. It took about an hour till I felt anything. After about 90 minutes, I began to feel very dizzy and lethargic, like being too drunk. I took a fat dab to try and stabilize, but felt nothing. I just fell asleep. When I awoke, I knew I made a terrible mistake. Everything was blurry, but I was sure I was in an oven. I was really sweaty, and my elbows felt locked. I felt like I really had to relieve myself, but I couldn't find the bathroom because I was blind. After about 15 minutes, my vision started to clear up and I could see. I tried to get off of the couch, but it felt like I left my hands behind and my legs could barely move. With incredible effort, I rolled off of the couch and began to crawl to the bathroom. I pulled myself onto the toilet and tried to defecate. I felt incredible relief until I looked into the bowl and there was nothing there. I tried again and I felt like I was leaking. When I looked in the toilet again, the water had turned to blood. No matter how much I wiped, the toilet paper always came up bloody. And as I left the bathroom, I looked into the mirror and I saw my father. His lips began to move and in that moment, I knew I shouldn't talk to him, so I just left the bathroom. When I entered my living room, I could see that some of my friends had come over. The only problem was, they had all died. Blood was pouring out of all of their orifices. It was more than horrifying. I quickly ran to my room. I tried to go online, but it wouldn't turn on. Frustrated, I went to my desktop, but I couldn't remember my password. I just wanted to listen to some music, but all I could do was shake my computer. I quickly ran past all of my dead friends and out the front door. I looked into the sky and all I could see was green gas. I was sure at this moment I was going through a psychotic break, so to avoid this I just got into my car. And to be honest, I don't know how long I was sitting in there. It felt like years. The next thing I remember was that I got back into my house and I was talking to my friend. She kept asking me if I was okay, but I couldn't speak. It was like no matter how loud I screamed, nothing would come out. Then my vision went blurry again, and I might have passed out. I don't know how long I slept. But when I awoke, I could only describe my surroundings as hell itself. It was like I entered a dimension of pure agony. The floor was covered in vomit two feet deep, and blood was gushing from my underwear. I waded into the bathroom to find that my dad had left the mirror. He was yelling at my younger version of myself, telling me that I would never be as successful as my brother, who recently died of Giardia. I, I tried to pull down my pants to clean up the blood, but I realized I wasn't wearing anything. I was stark naked, and then when I began to examine myself, I realized I had a vagina. This was strange because I'm a man. This moment just made me weep. I was confused. I was on the bathroom floor, and I was there for a while. Eventually, I could get myself back together and decided to leave the bathroom. I needed some water, so I walked to the sink, but I couldn't drink the water because no matter how long I waited and no matter how many times I turned on the tap, the water was always scalding. In this moment, I remembered when my brother was really sick. Anytime we tried to give him water, even ice water, it felt like it was burning him. It was like, for a moment, I was inhabiting his soul, and it felt good. At this point, my friends had turned into piles of rocks on the couch. I tried to piece them back together, but I couldn't hold on to anything. It felt like my hands were covered in grease. Needless to say, the rest of the night was something out of a dimension of unimaginable nightmares. Sometime around 5am, I started to come down. My vision was fuzzy, and I kept seeing something moving in the corner of my vision. I went to sleep for a few hours and woke up relatively okay. The road to recovery has been long, but I'm hopeful that with the continued help of antipsychotics, I will in time be able to overcome the trauma I experienced on Datura. I would not recommend Datura to even the most experienced trippers. What I saw can only be described as my own worst nightmare.
Our second story comes from user Disco. This was posted February 20th, 2011. Four of us, me, my boyfriend Ricky, Bevan, and Jeff, were staying at a beach house in a relatively remote location on the west coast of New Zealand. We'd spent the entire day sleeping, chilling, running around, and carving the beautiful blue waves. So we decided what better way to end the day than a nice sesh on the porch. So out came some weed, the bong, and the lighters. I had about four potent hits when I felt really nice and mellowed out. And I decided at that point I was feeling good, so I stopped there. And before we started smoking, we had eaten quite a bit. Lots of fresh fruit from a nearby orchard and barbecued fish. So our stomachs were by no means empty. Ricky then brought out eight Detroit seed pods, each containing between 80 to 100 seeds. Since there were four of us, two people could have a babysit while the other could pop some seeds. Although I'm nearly six foot, I'm still a chick, and there was no way I could restrain any of the guys if they needed me. So I was one of the seed poppers. Jeff had never done Detroit before, so he was a natural choice too. Besides, Ricky and Bevan were more than happy to keep their lips around the bong and laugh their asses off at us. 7 p.m. I opened two seed pods, one for me, one for Jeff, and we swallowed down the seeds. Prior to this experience, I'd done Dechora three times, but never had over 60-ish seeds in one sitting. So at that point, I decided I was ready to experiment with a bit more. 8 p.m. We spent the next hour just talking, eating marshmallows, and no clear effects setting in yet. So I popped another 50 seeds. Big mistake. Apart from the effects of the weed, I felt completely normal. I could stand and walk fine and hold a slightly slurred but coherent conversation. 15 minutes pass and I start feeling increasingly warm. Despite it being a chilly night, my body began radiating a huge amount of heat. This is when the hallucination started. I felt like I was sunbathing, though it was dark by now. I felt the sun envelop my body and drizzle it with golden rays of warmth. It felt divine. Everything was warm, loving, and inviting. Apparently by now, I was already down to my bra and panties. My heart rate increased dramatically. I knew it was kicking in. It's 9 p.m. I was smoking a spliff, which didn't exist, and dropped it, which I've read is very common in Detroit use. I crawled around looking for it to no avail. I figured it must have somehow fallen through the floorboards of the porch, though it was technically impossible. I stepped off the porch and lay on the grass below, gazing at the stars. I felt like me and the stars were one. We were the same. I don't know why, but I particularly remember this feeling of belonging with these giant balls of burning gas. To me, they were tangible diamonds in the sky, and I was too. I could see for billions of miles into the sky. It was one enormous entity of stars and patterned clusters. Although I was definitely hallucinating, everything felt insanely real. My mind felt normal, although my speech was slightly slurred and my walk was a little crooked. At that moment, I felt something crawling under my ass as I lay on the grass, so I moved and saw a pool of earwigs weaving in and out of the earth. I hate bugs, so I frantically rolled down the slight decline of grass onto the sand. This was the last thing I clearly remember. Everything else was told to me by Ricky, Bevan, and my faint memories, and the camera footage taken that night. This is also where things started to go wrong. I felt an insatiable thirst, and like I was stranded. I was yelling out for help, but only a mumble of jumbled words came out. I wasn't making any sense. I spent a good hour playing in the sand, throwing shells and rolling around. I picked up sand with my hand and watched it drop. I was mesmerized by its sheer awesomeness. I vaguely remember feeling like I was in the desert, and I felt an intense fear and paranoia. Nothing seemed safe. The sun still felt as if it was beaming down delicious rays of heat. I was crawling on the sand, thirsty, desperate. I remember hearing sharp, loud noises and feeling so shit by now. I needed water, I needed to piss, I needed to throw up, and I needed to get out of this horrible, desolate place. I could only see things that were around 10 meters away. Everything else faded into a bright light. I still have flashbacks and experience this at times. It felt like hours and hours had passed, but it was only actually 20 minutes. I don't know what went in my head during that time, but it was frightening. I remember images of bright red bolts larger than my house. I've experienced this red bolt hallucination many times before. 30 meters from me, the ocean roared. I heard the sound of water and I wanted to run towards it, dive into this pool of infinity and in shallow water forever. Without warning, I snapped onto my feet and ran like a bullet, dodging obstacles which didn't 
exist, <laughs> and I ran towards the water. Ricky was only 10 or so meters away from me when I suddenly jolted. I heard heavy, loud footsteps behind me going faster than me. To me, the water was safety. I was being chased, and the water was the only chance of survival. I managed to run into the shallows of the water when I felt sharp claws dig into my bare flesh from behind, and a force throw me into the wet sand behind me. I must have thought it was a giant eagle or vulture because I kept screaming at Ricky, calling him a stupid fucking bird, and trying to grab his beak and hold it shut. I was moving frantically trying to escape his grasp, but I couldn't. He laid on top of me holding me down for 30 odd minutes. My screaming had turned into tears and my kicking and punching had turned into scratching and hair pulling. I had very little control over my body. Everything just happened without my mind's permission. I was on autopilot. I was so scared, so helpless, so alone, and so vacant. I had no idea where Jeff, Bevan, or Ricky were. They had vanished long ago. I called them several times throughout my experience, but they never appeared to come. My mind was gone. Everything seemed incredibly real, and I found it impossible to separate reality from fantasy. Because as far as I knew, everything was real. Ricky carried and dragged me into the beach house and held me up in the shower. I was a complete mess physically and emotionally. I could no longer stand properly and I would sway from side to side begging it to stop. The water burned. It felt like it was sizzling as it ran down my back but I gave into it and let it burn and melt me away. I literally felt like I was going down the drain. I thought the grains of sand washed off my skin were pieces of me, swirling down, carried by the burning acid water deep into the drain, as if they meant nothing. I vomited four times. I stressfully started talking about being literally turned inside out, and again, I begged for it to stop. I let it all happen with no physical fight. It was a hugely frightening experience. I was making funny groaning noises, my skin turned white and my eyes were wide open and my pupils filled my entire iris. I suddenly noticed Ricky was in the shower holding me up. He looked different to how I remember, far older and getting bigger and bigger the more I looked at him. I remember seeing my nose in the bottom corner of his eyes, which appeared to grow too. I could barely concentrate on anything, but his eyes managed to pierce right through me. Ricky dried me off and put me into bed. The entire room was spinning and turning upside down. Even though I had barfed everything out, I still felt the need to vomit. I was hanging off the bed, rolling around and singing to myself. The music I heard, which was all in my head, was the most complex, incredible thing I have ever heard. I thought of it like a skyscraper, layer upon layer upon layer, jammed together to create this mind-blowing fusion of beats and notes. I can't explain how amazing it was. It was my calm in the storm. By now, it was around 4 a.m and the worst was over. I was so exhausted, but I couldn't sleep. I was incredibly restless, tossing and turning constantly. A figure appeared and I talked to it. I was actually talking to myself and speaking both parts of the conversation. I remember drifting in and out of reality. There were moments where I thought I was going mad, and other times I managed to convince myself it was just a dream. I still don't know where I was or how I got there, but the feeling of a threat was no longer present. I must have fallen asleep, where I had the most amazing dream, which can't possibly be real. It was pretty x-rated, so I probably shouldn't go into detail. I remember reading a book in my mind. I knew all the words, and when I gradually woke up, I was still reading the book in my head. I had massive cuts and bruises all over my body, which were actually just minor scrapes. So yes, I was still having hallucinations. I still remember everything which happened from here on out. I somehow managed to believe my mouth was on my forehead, so when I tried to drink a glass of water, it poured all down my face. I would drift in and out of reality and imagination every so often, but by now, I knew things I saw weren't real. The rest of the story is fairly boring and uneventful, but the main effects of Datura last around 24 hours. I had difficulty understanding basic things, yet I could understand incredibly complex things in my head. Even now, two months later, I sometimes still see everything around me fade into white light. As I said earlier, I've experimented with the Chora before, but this was the first time and last time I'll have 150 seeds. I'd enjoyed it in the past, but I definitely won't be doing it ever again. Although my account of what happened may not sound so scary to the reader, I cannot emphasize enough how truly frightening this experience was. I felt so incredibly shit throughout the entire experience and for a day or two after. 
not only had I managed to make a total ass out of myself, I could have very easily drowned as well. And in the past, I've also done acid several times. The thing that I love and hate about Tatura is that I couldn't really separate reality from hallucinations. However, on acid, I knew I was seeing things that don't exist. I'll definitely take acid again, but I'll never swallow another Detroit seed in my life. Hello everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, let me know in the comments down below, and leave a like if you liked the video. If you have any video recommendations, you want me to cover a specific drug, you want me to cover a specific dark topic, history topic, true crime, let me know in the comments down below. I'm open to all recommendations, I really want to make sure that I can serve y'all in the best way, so if you have anything that you want me to cover, please let me know in the comments down below. For this channel, the upload schedule will remain at 4pm or 5pm, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I think that works the best for all of us you guys seem to be really receptive to that so be prepared to get content tomorrow and the day after that and as always i'll catch you in the next one